Hey guys, uh, this doesn't look very stable, right? Let's just switch on some EIS. Okay, that's a little better, but it's still not good enough. Let's switch to OIS. Yeah, that's better. Hey guys, I'm Akshay from vbomb.com and welcome to the fifth episode of our ultimate smartphone series. Today we are doing the ultimate video stabilization test and by the end of this video, you will know which phones offer the best stabilization, be it in the budget range, the budget flagships or in the flagships. But before we get started, how about you hit the bell icon to get notified every time we post an awesome new video. Also, this video has been brought to you by AceBuy, which lets you easily find and hire local professionals. I'll talk more about AceBuy at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. Now then, let's get started. So here's how we tested things out. We took three different types of shots with every phone. We shot videos while walking, which was easy, and running, which was not so easy, but hey, I lost some weight. And we also took videos from a moving car to see their stabilization in different scenarios. We shot these videos in 1080p at 30 FPS because EIS usually does not kick in for anything above that. Now that's clear, let's start things off with the budget smartphones. So we have the Mi A2, the Redmi Note 5 Pro, the Nokia 6.1 Plus, all of which have EIS. And we also have the Zenfone Max Pro M1, which doesn't have EIS or OIS, but it's a very popular phone, so we decided to include it. Plus, this will help us show you the difference EIS can make in a smartphone. Okay, so this here is a clip we shot while walking. As you can see, the Zenfone Max Pro and the Nokia 6.1 Plus are downright terrible. There's a lot of shaking in the videos and the Nokia 6.1 Plus looks like it's doing at least something wrong. So let's just get them out of the way. The Redmi Note 5 Pro and the Mi A2 are pretty close here, but if you look closely, the Mi A2 has some weird vibrations every now and then. I think the Redmi Note 5 Pro is definitely the best in this situation. Next up, we have a clip we shot while running. Here too, the Zenfone Max Pro and the Nokia 6.1 Plus are easily the worst out of all the four phones. However, looking at just the Redmi Note 5 Pro and the Mi A2, we can see that while they keep the frame stable enough, the video is still messed up. However, the Redmi Note 5 Pro just feels slightly better. Moving on to the car shot, the Zenfone Max Pro is again pretty bad. However, this time the Nokia 6.1 Plus has fared a lot better. It still falls short of the Note 5 Pro and the Mi A2 though. And honestly, the Redmi Note 5 Pro seems to fare the best once again. Honestly, I was expecting the Mi A2 to be the best here because it's the newer phone and people have been praising its cameras quite a bit. However, the Redmi Note 5 Pro is the clear winner in budget smartphones. The Nokia 6.1 Plus, even though it has EIS, is terrible. And the Zenfone Max Pro, well, I wasn't really expecting much from it since it doesn't have video stabilization of any kind. Anyway, moving on to the budget flagship phones, these should obviously perform better than the budget phones. So here we have the OnePlus 6, which comes with OIS and EIS, the Zenfone 5Z, the Poco F1 and the Nova 3, all of which come with EIS. So this is a clip we shot while walking. Other than the Nova 3, which is the worst out of the four phones, as you can see, the rest of these phones capture videos that are pretty stable while walking. It's a bit difficult to choose one of these phones as the best. However, personally, I think the OnePlus 6 is just very slightly better. Now let's take a look at the running shots. It's easily visible that the Zenfone 5Z and the Nova 3 are the worst out of the four. And while the Poco F1 is okayish with stabilization here, the OnePlus 6 with its EIS plus OIS is definitely better than any of the other three phones. Next up, we have a car shot. And once again, the Nova 3 is just bad. The stabilization here is just really poor. The rest of these three phones are pretty close, though the Poco does screw up every now and then. Once again though, I think the OnePlus 6 is better than the others, even though it's by a small margin. Overall, I'd say the OnePlus 6 wins in this price category, and that's primarily due to the fact it's the only phone in this segment with both OIS and EIS. However, I do have to mention that the POCO F1 is really close to the OnePlus 6, which is commendable since it's priced a whopping 14,000 rupees lower than the OnePlus 6. Next up, we have the flagships, the best camera phones out there. There's the iPhone 10, which has dual OIS, the Galaxy Note 9, which also has dual OIS, the Pixel 2 XL, which has both EIS and OIS, and the P20 Pro, which uses OIS, EIS, and AIS, which is basically AI stabilization. So first we have a walking shot, and while all these phones are looking pretty good, I'd pick the P20 Pro here. It's pretty damn stable and it just looks a bit better than the other three phones we have. Moving on, we have a running shot, and this time around the iPhone X is just, wow, it's bad. 
Once again, it's pretty evident that the P20 Pro is doing a much better job here too. Finally, we have the car shot and right off the bat, all these phones are performing remarkably well here. I honestly expected them to perform this well in other situations too, but whatever. Picking a winner here is really incredibly difficult, but we drove over a pothole and there it's evident that the P20 Pro was better by a little margin, so I'm gonna give it the win. Okay, so in flagships, the P20 Pro is definitely the best. Honestly, the stabilization here is so good, it kind of feels as if the phone is on a gimbal. I'm really impressed with the stabilization on all these phones to be fair, but the P20 Pro just wins it. And the iPhone 10 in running conditions just sucks. Well, that concludes our ultimate smartphone EIS and OIS test. So let me just round up the winners for you. The Redmi Note 5 Pro in the budget range, the OnePlus 6 in the budget flagship range, and the Huawei P20 Pro in the flagship range are the ultimate smartphones in their respective price ranges to shoot stable and smooth videos. Now let's talk a bit about our sponsor for this video. Ace Buy is a service aimed at both employers and freelancers. So if you're a freelancer, you can check out the browse page to see all the jobs on offer and bid for the same. It's easy. If you're an employer, you get a view of all the people looking for jobs. You can just post a job in the app and you should get a number of responses. Plus, BWOM subscribers can use the promo code GOINDIA to get an additional Rs 300 on your first job. The app is easy to use and you can download it on your Android or iOS smartphone from the link in the video description below, so check it out. Well, that pretty much wraps up our ultimate EIS and OIS test. So which ultimate test should we do next? Let us know in the comments down below. Also, give this video a like and share it with your friends. Lastly, subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. That's me signing off. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.